think of like August 1st as the every day after August 1st that your MCAT score comes back is another day that your application is potentially delayed. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? I am awesome. What can I help you with? Yeah. So um, my main questions kind of center around the MCAT and also the HIPSA scholarship. Um, so starting out with the MCAT, I've watched a lot of your podcasts um, and different talks you've done on this. Um, but I kind of still have this one question that has remained um, what is like the latest that you can take the MCAT while still being considered early? Cause you've definitely instilled in me that being early is very important. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard some people say like mid July or mid June is the latest that you should aim for, mm -hmm. um, you know, applying to one school, like you said, um, to get verified and then, you know, have your secondaries pre-written, uh, all that to the best of your ability. Um, yeah. so with that in mind, like when is the average day that most people are like sitting down to look at the application. I've heard them say that Labor Day is the best time to be complete with everything. Yeah. yeah. When is Labor Day? September? September, like somewhere. Early September. Yeah. 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 For, first week or two of September. Uh, I, I'm not good with holidays and knowing where they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I just know Veterans Day is in November because it has a V like November. Um, so, <laughs> little, little tricks. I, I yeah, don't know. It's I just know. something that doesn't stick in my mind. Yeah. When are you thinking about taking the MCAT? Uh, I'll answer it in um, a roundabout way. Yeah. So, as late as I can, unfortunately, because I kind of I started this whole pre med journey a, a little bit late. Mm. Um, and in my senior year, I'm going to be doing a senior thesis. I'm still, unfortunately going to be completing some prereqs. This is all a year from now, by the way, but okay. I'm just trying to figure this stuff out now. Um, so I'm just going to have a lot going on in my senior year. I know that. Yep. So, you know, summertime, summertime, sometime is going to be roughly when I can take it. Um, the time that med schools will typically just roughly right and every medical school is a little bit different roughly when they're going to start digging into applications when you if you're on student doctor network or reddit you start to see people going oh i got my first in interview invitation that's right around the beginning of august so if you think about the general timeline you submit your applications in uh at the end of may mid-may depending on the application uh service that you're using you do your secondaries. Medical schools don't get applications or don't have access to them typically until kind of mid-June to late June. You turn your secondaries around. We're into kind of the first week or two of July. Mm -hmm. Letters of recommendations, committee letters, all of those start rolling in. Uh, and by the time med schools are like, okay, we have enough applications here. Let's go take a look. We're done with the prior class. That's finalized. We took our week or two of vacation where we're actually taking a break or reworking our processes, whatever. It's about August, maybe a little bit later. So if you can get your MCAT in around then, that's great. Think of like August 1st as the Every day after August 1st that your MCAT score comes back is another day that your application is potentially delayed. Yeah. That, if you can if you can get your score back in before that August 1st date, your application isn't delayed, but the MCAT prep itself may hinder your ability to yeah. focus on the application. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if you are planning this far out, mm -hmm. can you potentially take the MCAT a year earlier to That's get it out of the way? Because I'm, I'm taking biochem, taking physics one and two during my senior year. Okay. Those are, at least to me, those are very important classes that I'd like to yeah. have a good you know, foundation for before popping into the Kaplan books and the blueprint stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so... That's what's tough for me. Yeah. So um, th those are two big classes. One of them you could self-teach yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Not having physics one and biochem makes it a little bit tougher. It's still doable potentially depending on what your schedule looks like and everything around uh, potentially taking it earlier. Yeah. 
And then the other option is you just you take it and then you just delay a year to apply. So you're not you're not rushing to yeah. squeeze in the MCAT just because you're trying to fit everything in. It sounds like you're going to take a gap year anyway. It, is that is, do I have that right? Yeah. So the, the gap year would be when I'm actually taking the MCAT because I would graduate and then that summer take take the MCAT. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, from all of that, it sounds like a good goal would be like mid to late June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with um, a mid to late June MCAT. <clears throat> from a from a application timing standpoint, yes. yeah. other than it potentially gets in the way of uh, both ways, your application prep gets in the way of your MCAT prep, your MCAT prep gets in the way of your application prep. All right. Um, that's a good goal to have. I can, I can try to figure that out. Um, okay, well, thank you for that. That helps. Um, my other questions were in regards to the HIPSA scholarship. I saw... You did a podcast on that a while ago, um, and that was super helpful just for even like making these questions. Yeah. Um, so I guess very first question now, would be just just for clarification, what what scholarship are you talking about specifically? I'm not familiar with at least how you're oh, saying the, it. The, yeah, I'm sorry. The NHSC HPSA scholarship, so like for rural medicine and okay, unserved. the National Health yeah. Service Corps scholarship. Yes, got yes, it. Sorry. Okay, um, which are based on HIPSA scores. So. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I really think that's a good fit for me and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my first questions would be, uh, when do you actually apply for this scholarship? Because there's the scholarship and there's the loan forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So if you do the scholarship, are you doing that alongside your med school application? Like when you actually apply? So it would yeah. be the same time. Like, I don't know. Okay. I, I actually don't oh, know. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not super familiar. I, I, I had them on the podcast uh, yeah, to okay. talk about the scholarship, but the... The scholarship timing and all of that, I'm not super familiar with. I don't, I don't keep those sorts of dates in my head. So okay. the best thing to go, the best thing to do is to go to the National Health Service Corps website and just look at what their timelines look like. All right, cool. Yeah, I had a few other questions around there, but I should probably look more into it myself. Um, so I guess one of the other questions I had that's a little bit more general is what are, and I've heard multiple opinions on this. Uh, what are medical schools and missions views on missions trips to foreign countries? Mm. Um, I've had some advisors say that they might even see this as pointless or flashy considering like there's so much, <laughs> uh, considering that there's so much that can be done here in the U S for like underserved yeah. communities and stuff like that. So yeah. what would you say about that? I, I think you need to be true to who you are. And if, if going abroad and, and serving a community is, is what you want to do, what you felt called to do. Great. Go for it understanding that yes, medical school admissions may look at that and go, I'm glad you could afford to go. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. The, the bigger issue is if you do things there that you're not allowed to do here, if you are doing procedures or, or helping out in surgeries, things like that, that, it is felt and it is uh, that you're taking advantage of that community because they're a third world country. And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm the, the white savior. I'm going to come in and do whatever I want to you because nobody else is going to do it. So uh, I paid lots of money. Let me, let me cut you up, right? Um, that's where there's a bigger issue of, of some ethical boundaries being crossed. Why would you do something to another country's population when you wouldn't be allowed to do it to our population. That's a great point. Yeah. And I've definitely heard advisors strongly recommend against doing anything like that and writing about anything like that. So, yeah. Okay. okay. That's good to know. Um, yeah. That covers the questions that I had written down. Um, but can I ask you some, some other questions? Too? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so kind of random, um, but for the personal statement, you're and a half away. I've already started doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the things that's come up for me, and I've heard you say not to do this, so I'm following that advice, but I want to ask you directly as well. If you've had some, especially like firsthand clinical experience, like I was, um, a nursing assistant at, at a psych hospital for about a year. Um, awesome experience. Um, but I also saw some stuff while I was working there that just like really disturbed me. Like some things that were going on in our, from our own healthcare workers, that I was just kind of 
hesitant about and Mm -hmm. confused about. And that has definitely affected the way that I view medicine and the way that I'm approaching medicine and Mm -hmm. has instilled even more of a passion in a lot of ways to just uh, be, have integrity and to to try my best to like know the right things to do. I'm going to mess up. I know that. Yep. Um, but how do you write about that stuff in a personal statement without advise uh, uh, admins committees looking like, oh, here's this pre-med that thinks he knows everything. Well, yeah. I don't. Well, I acknowledge that fully. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You, and that's a great question and great insight that you understand that there are some potential issues. I, I talk about it typically when when that, si- that sort of stuff comes up in a personal statement or activity description. I, I basically leave a comment of like, this is the negative aspect of what you experienced. Mm-hmm. Let's use that experience, but focus on the positive. Yeah. So instead of saying, oh, Johnny, the other medical assistant uh, abused or whatever, neglected, whatever uh, the patients, and I'm gonna do better because I'm the best and Johnny's terrible. It's it's just focusing on that reflection, that, that reflective piece to, to what is your takeaway from that? How do you want to impact the world of medicine? Not necessarily only because of how you experienced bad behavior, but because of that and all of your other experiences, what is your kind of big picture thesis going to look like in terms of how you want to impact medicine? And I typically reserve that kind of language for a conclusion in a personal statement. Uh, and 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 potentially some reflections in activity descriptions. Uh, okay, so yeah, my um, my question is: so I've heard you in a lot of, and this is great. I really really like that you do this. You always talk about how you should choose a medical school that's going to best fit you and your goals, and not just look at you know U.S. News top top ten schools and decide yep. where to go based on that. So, what would you say are like the criteria that we should be looking at to like, hey, like this is the best fit for me? I should really try to shoot for this medical school besides just, oh, they make a lot of money and are ranked high. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really just knowing who you are, yeah. thinking about your future. What does that look like? What type of practice potentially will you want to be in? Do you want to be in an academic practice, a community practice? What resources are available at each of the institutions that yeah. uh, are going to support you and your mission? Uh, you, you talked about going abroad and doing a medical mission abroad. If you're interested in some sort of international travel as a physician, there are lots of medical schools that have relationships with other countries, with medical institutions in other countries to send second, third, fourth year medical students to do electives in those countries, if that's something you're interested in. So it's it's looking at the medical schools through a lens that you've already kind of assumed some things about your future, knowing that a lot of that may be blown up and you're going to meet someone and change your mind and get a mentor medical school that exposes you to a specialty you never thought of before. So uh, you, you just have to do the best you can and not second guess what if I was at that other school that I got into? It's just you, you do the best you can with the, the knowledge that you have today, uh, knowing that you'll never know what would have happened if you went to the other school. So uh, it's just a lot of research, a lot of just looking at websites, talking to as many people as you can. It's one of the better places to look at Student Doctor Network or Reddit it are the school specific threads from the medical student side of things, not the pre-med side of things, but the medical student side of things to see what the medical students at those schools are talking about, knowing that it's still anonymous and they may not actually be a medical student at that place, but uh, you just, you do the best you can. I guess this will be my final question because I don't really have any others. Um, for, so you pointed out like we should be, and, and this is kind of how I created my medical school list, which I don't know yet course, but um, based off of like what you would plan to do in the future. So I've also heard from some advisors who are like, oh, you know, in your personal statement, don't declare that you want to go into psychiatry or whatever yep. else, because you don't know anything. And, Correct. you know, you'll, you'll figure it out in medical school. Yep. Um, but at the same time, like, 
would that kind of show some maturity to also be like, hey, I think I know what I want to do? No, it, it actually, in my mind, shows some immaturity. Uh, it shows some naive naivete uh, yeah. that you're like, oh, I'm going to be a psychiatrist. I'm like, you haven't even rotated through all the different specialties yet. Like, yeah, you slow idea. your roll. Yes, yeah. you have and everyone's different, I came in with lots of ortho experience. You're going to have potentially lots of psych experience just based on the experiences that either you sought out because you were interested in them or the experiences that were just available to you, knowing that you needed to get clinical experience and working at a psych hospital was one of the things that, that was available, the only thing that was available. So from an activity description standpoint, from an activity list standpoint, it's gonna be pretty obvious where your potential interests lie because that's what you did. Right. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But to go into a personal statement and change the answer or change the question from, from why do you wanna be a doctor to what type of doctor do you want to be? Yeah. Is is not what is generally recommended. Do some people do it? Sure but it's not recommended at all. Focus on why do you want to be a doctor, plain yeah. and simple. That's that's a really good answer, and I totally agree with that. Um, so if I can get more specific, like for me, psychiatry, like my just interest with the brain and you know mental illness and all that kind of stuff, it definitely introduced me into the medical field. So it was at least warranted to like at least mention some of that interest into it, but without focusing on it, I guess. Um. Potentially, I mean, yeah. your your personal statement is is still the, at least the way that I recommend writing is still going to be made up of stories of your experiences, and so one of your experiences or two of your experiences may be around a, a psychiatric patient, and so your interests may uh, and, and your your passions may come through in that story, and that's fine, as long as you're not ending every paragraph with. And this is why I want to be a psychiatrist. And this is why I'm interested in mental health. And this is like, um, I, I think that's that's where you're go, you're crossing a line. Okay. I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's that's all I got. That helped me out a lot. So, so appreciate it. With your MCAT prep, mm-hmm. blueprintmcat.com. Go sign up for a free account. Create that study planner. Uh, a study plan using their study planner tool so that you know because you're going to take it a little bit later you're going to have lots of stuff to do with your thesis um, and your potential classes that you're taking um, your application prep which check out application academy um, application prep MCAT prep thesis stuff stick to a plan using that study planner tool and hopefully it'll help you on your way Totally, yeah. I've heard a lot of good things about Blueprint, and I'm not just just saying that. But <laughs> you've definitely, I've definitely heard like your guys' exams, especially, are really, really helpful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely sign up for that. Thank you.